I'm sure we've got something since Sunday that we really need to pray about. There's one request I'm going to say first is um, Sister Claudine has a, a girl that she works with, a teenager, and she's really mentally having a real hot, rough time with the suicide devil. So let's tell the suicide devil to get away from that girl and pray for God to help her. Her name is Angel. Pray for God to help her. Somebody else got a prayer request. Brother, they for me for every day. Okay. I need lots of things. Okay. And I pray for that. Okay. Yeah, pray for his hands too. He loves to work with his hands and they're very hurt and hurt. So pray for his hands to be healed. Somebody else? Um, Kevin's brother, um, David, was supposed to have a procedure this morning to remove the kidney stones or whatever. But uh, he hasn't heard from his mom, so he doesn't know oh, okay. uh, what's going on. And it kind of is worrying him. So okay. let's pray for David. Let's pray. Yes, yeah, David. Yeah, David Rook. Right? Okay. Somebody else. There's still a lady in the truck. Yes. We've got a pretty picture of Riley. <coughs> She's so cute. Can y'all see it? Oh, maybe she's maybe they'll send it to y'all. She's cute. And uh, pray for pray for um, Brian and Olivia and Riley. They've got a really good saving work in their life. Save them, sanctify them, fill them with the Holy Ghost and Father. Somebody else this tonight. Our family for salvation. Yes. Amen. And then that's good. My sister Barbara has COVID and she's been real sick. She's older than I am. Oh, your sister. My Barbara. sister Barbara. Mine. Well, you're my sister Barbara. But <laughs> you I thought you saw my there's Barbara. A, yeah, much, like, there's a comma in the wrong yeah. place yeah. there. Yeah. Your sister. My <laughs> sister Barbara. And uh, and sister not the other sister Barbara either. Yeah, that's what I This is my sister Barbara. She was, when Michael died, she came and stayed with me, and she was in church with us. Uh, you remember? Yeah. Um, and I'll pray for her because. She's been so careful not to get it, but she got it. So pray that God will see her through it. Um, see someone else. Remember Sister Angela Peoples? Are you showing off your granddaddy? Yeah. 
Um, um, baby seats. Show for six. Put it on the show to the people out there, too. Can I see? 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 It's hot. It is. I've been just chipping away at it early in the morning and late night. That's the only way I can do it. Thank you. Um, we got our building for everybody that doesn't know. We showed it off just a few minutes ago to our, our church. So that it's, it's really nice. It's a nice size, isn't it? And uh, we're going to work on it and get it fixed where it's nice. And uh, thank the Lord for it. It's paid for. It's ours. It's wonderful. Thank the Lord. And uh, it's just, we're just going to have enough room no matter what happens. I believe. We're going to have enough room for anybody if you want to come. We may have to move out to the fellowship hall if we get too many in church, but that'll be all right on it. <coughs> so we'll, we'll just see what happens. But thank the Lord for that building. It's very nice. Um, anything else anybody's got to pray about tonight? Yes. Praise the Lord. We need to pray uh, about Brother Jose's headaches. He has them quite often, and that's hard to have headaches all the time. I think I don't have them, but I've had headaches before in the band, so. I don't usually have a headache. Uh, pray for the Lord to heal him from having them. Anything else? Go ahead. Anybody else? Anything else? I'd like for us to pray for all the kids that were in youth camp, that the Lord would seal them to Him, so that they would not feel. Now that I'm not in youth camp, I don't feel that the Lord's had having anything to do with me. That kind of feeling, like you know, it's all over. It's not all over. And God's God is just as interested in them as He was at youth camp, and pray that all of them would feel that love of the Savior and stay on fire. <coughs> Anything else? Okay, let's go to prayer and believe the Lord for all of it. Thank Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God.
202.
Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Where is it? Is it the Bible there? 
this is my Bible, but I don't know where the song is I brought. Anybody see a little song book? It's about the size of this Bible. Well, we we'll have to save it for later then. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know where I'm just going to see. There it is. Oh, <laughs> I'm talking to y'all in the kitchen, aren't I? <laughs> I'm not used to this. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you may think it foolish what I'm going to say.
Somebody that knows you've been born again, I want you to testify. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> All right. Praise the Lord. I want to thank him that Jesus. he caused me to be born again at 39 years old. And oh, glory. 39. Mm -hmm. Wow. Somebody else we know. And, um, mm -hmm. and he's kept me ever since. And well, he's keeping me before that. And I didn't recognize him. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when I start and I start to think about all the things that he's he got me through and taken me through and dragged me through. All I can do is praise Him. Hallelujah! Amen. Amen. Glory! Somebody else tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Gloria. Come here and get this. And look there with that smile, honey. Turn around. Well, before I went to youth camp, there was just some stuff that was really dragging me down. It was making me sad. I was depressed. And and then when we went to youth camp, that first service, I just, I felt like it was all gone. Man, yes. Hallelujah. It, it made me feel so happy. I didn't want to ever do it again. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Born again. Somebody else. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. <laughs> Doesn't it say in the Word? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. He bought me back. He gave me a new life. Oh, boy, now they're all jumping up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go ahead, brother. I want to thank God for everything He's done for me because it had to be God to take Stay. the things away that He took away from me. And the urges that I had and the, I had a lot of depression just like little Gloria back there. But, I mean, I was addicted to a lot of things and He took it from me and I haven't wanted it. And I don't know why I didn't get saved sooner. Amen. Uh, Amen. Born again. Hallelujah. Come on, Sister Annie. Thank you, Jesus. I thank the Lord for making me born again. Yes, glory to God. He took my place. I should not be saved. I should be the one going to hell. But you know, Jesus loves us so much that he died for me. He died for you. Yes. And I pray that y'all will turn to him before it's too late. Amen. Be born again. Anybody else? Oh, glory. I feel like I want to sing that song again. Hallelujah. Born again, there's really been a change in me. Born again, just like Jesus said. Born again, and all because of Calvary. I'm glad, so glad that I've been born again. Somebody glad, so glad that you've been born again. Hallelujah. Praise God. Testify to each other out there. If you're sitting in the room with somebody that's watching us, just tell them, I'm so glad I'm born again. Hallelujah. Praise God. Here he comes. Come on, Bill. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. I thank the Lord for all he's done for me, and I'm glad to be here. I'm here. He's been here. Go ahead. I've been up there. <laughs> I thank the Lord for letting me uh, see the Lord in a new way that I hadn't seen before. You know, sometimes it seems like, you know, it's hard to imagine that He's with you and all the things you're going through throughout your day when you're just, you know, living and all you're thinking about Him is in church and all you're doing is, you know, sitting around and you're, you're having to work or, well, not in my case, but if you're, you know, doing other things throughout your day, you know, you're not really thinking about Him all the time. And sometimes something will go wrong and you're just, you know, like, oh, I need to fix this or, you know, this isn't working right. And, you know, a lot of times, especially, it helps after youth camp, but you'll just think, oh, Lord, help me with this, you know, and it mm -hmm. just, and I remember we had, you know, Thursday night is when I really prayed through for, I don't know, I don't know how long it was, it was a long time, but, wow. yeah, I remember uh, I had been, I had been singing right before that, 
and uh, and and about you know 20 minutes into singing, I, my throat was hurting, and I was like, man, this this is horrible. And then I kept singing. I was just like, it's whatever, you know, I need to do this. And I and I started to get in, and my throat didn't hurt that much anymore. And then everybody got done singing, and I went down to go start praying. And when I went down there for like the first, I don't know, 20 minutes of me just standing up there praying, I was all I was thinking was, my throat hurts. My, I need to drink, you know. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, I stopped thinking about that, you know, and yes. I was just praising the Lord. And, you know, my arms were up, people hold them up, which if I could find each and every person who held my arms up at some point, I want to give them a shake by the hand if they have any left. <laughs> but uh, it was, I thank the Lord for that because that helped me so much. <laughs> As a yeah. human, I don't know. But, um, you know, I was I was talking to one of the guys, he's like, oh, you know, you had to hold your arms up. I was like, thank you so much. And even then, when, uh, you know, I was I was praising the Lord, I was holding them up, and, and I, I, they weren't tired or anything, and all of a sudden the left one started cramping up, but, you know, it, no, I wasn't holding anything, just for me, just holding it up there, and then all of a sudden, you know, I, I just thought, you know, that night right before that, you know, Brother Carraway talked about, you know, getting rid of all the distractions, and then I realized that's what it was. It wasn't, you know, my arm hurting. It was just the devil trying to distract me and say, put your arm down. Right. Stop praising the Lord. And so I, I pray, that's what I prayed. I prayed, Lord, take away the distractions. And after that, my arms oh, hurt no. anymore. My arms were fine. Yes. You know, other things would spring up. My legs started hurting after about, I don't know, an hour. <laughs> but, you know, it, it was... Eventually, I ended up on the floor, which was a blessing for my legs and for me, I think, because, you know, it, it helped me. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. No more holding my arms up there. I think everybody's glad about it. But um, I thank the Lord because he really, you know, sent a blessing to me and, and made me work for it. Usually, you know, he'll, he'll bless me a little while I'm playing or while I'm doing something else. And I was able to look past what I needed to do as a musician and performer and, and went to praising the Lord, you know, without, without playing anything, without thinking about anything. You know, and I and I thank him so much because it was a blessing like I've never seen before. Woo! Glory! Let's all shout over that one. Glory to God! Hallelujah! Woo! Thank you, Jesus! Thank you, Father! Thank you, Father! Oh, glory to God! Glory to God! Hallelujah! I'm seeing some good fruit out of it, too, Bill. Good fruit. I love that. Born again. Somebody else? Come on now. Come on. Hallelujah. You're only telling the whole world. <laughs> we can even get to a thousand subscribers somewhere, right? Not even the whole world. Oh, right. Part of the world. How's that? Part of the world. Part of the world. Well, I just want to thank the Lord for uh, helping me, keeping me, and, you know, letting me feel that newborn, um, yes. born again experience. Yes. Um, eleven years ago, and I'm counting it down to eleven years because that's how long ago my first time at youth camp, and I really knew I was saved. I really knew I was saved, and I was down at the I was down at the altar, and I was praying. And this is when Papa came up, and he was uh, praying with me down at that altar, and I was just crying down there. Just my heart was broken because I just didn't. I did not like the way I was seeing myself, and like you know, when you're when you're down there praying, you you see the mirror of yourself of what you were and what you what you used to be, and that right there just broke my heart because I didn't like the way I looked. But the Lord broke it, and He showed me what I could become. He showed me what I would become, and I was in tears. How I was praying for me. And the Lord showed me that not just me, but my family as well. It would be my whole family. And um, till this day, my family is praising the Lord. My family is worshiping God. And they're all doing it to their heart, to, to their, their fullest, to their heart they know. And uh, the Lord showed me lots of different things. And, uh, you know, throughout my life as a, as a newborn Christian, and I'm 11 years old. <laughs> I'm not newborn anymore, man. Just a baby compared to 40. <laughs> but you know, he shows you. He shows you new light. He shows you a new direction. He lifts you up and he gives you that motivation to keep going, even though the devil in your left ear will always 
but I say one like your left ear. <laughs> you know why? He, the devil never does anything right. <laughs> so he's in my left ear, and he's he's always in my left ear, and he's always telling me, "You can't do this. You're not gonna go on. You're gonna fall on your knees. You're not gonna be able to keep on going." But the Lord says, "While you're on your knees, pray. <laughs> Lift yes. up your hands and glorify me." And that's what I do. And you know. Hallelujah. Granny showed me to bring the word on Tuesday night to a prayer meeting, and I've been yes. trying my best. He's been doing the it, Lord's too. The Lord's been showing Woo! me words, been showing good. me scripture. Yes, and go that's ahead. That's what the Lord does. He just gives you the word, and out of your mouth shall, you know, shall flow. Yes. And I'm just really appreciative that he just gave me that, that gift. Amen. Amen. Well, last Amen. night, we were, you know, we've been talking about some things that needed God's will and, you know, to find out what he wanted. And, and, you know, all right after that, Jose was like, all right, well, this scripture is great. It was all about, you know, seeking for God's will and yes. you know what you want to do. And, and I think all of us have issues, you know, in our lives. Right? At all times, I think, almost, where you need God's will in something. Yes. Where, you know, there's something there that you're like, I wish I knew what to do about that. And I think it helped me a lot, and I think all of us a lot, to have that, you know, confirmed in, in the scriptures that were given to Brother Jose. And it was amazing. Amen. Glory to God. He's doing a good job. I thank God. We're, um, <clears throat> we stay later and pray for, for the Lord to fill him with the Holy Ghost. And we're going to go on. We're going to keep on. We're not going to give up, are we, Sister Barbara? No way. God's going to do it. Hallelujah. <coughs> I'm going I'm to read if everybody's satisfied. <laughs> Sister Linda is not satisfied, but I guess everybody else is. Okay, come on, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> She's all right. Four months ago. I'm not right, sorry. It's all right, huh? Four months ago. Four months ago. Sitting in a hospital. I didn't think I'd be here. We were on our way out. We passed Sister Linda and she said, I feel like there's a reason I should stay. And we stayed. We talked. Talked about God. And on the way home, I told my mom and dad I want to be saved. <laughs> it looks like I've lived a new life. <laughs> yes. Pass it over. Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Pass it back to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I thank God. You know, uh, things happen differently than we expect them to. You got two ways. Oh. <laughs> well, does that make me sound any better? Yeah, it's loud. <laughs> <laughs> We're okay with just hearing a voice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is kind of pastor y'all need one with two lights. <laughs> right, amen. Yeah, we'll have that Maybe you there. listen to me. <laughs> Stand rigged up like they do in the news interviews. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, here. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, y'all. That was a little bit much. <laughs> Hallelujah. But things do happen. You don't expect them the way, the way they happen. But, oh, uh, it's God that's getting the glory, isn't it? Yes, amen. I'll tell you something about God. He's God. He can do it the way He wants to. Can He? And if we'll get to the place where we say, okay, that's your will, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it. I've been doing that. I'm okay with it. I miss Him, but I'm okay with it. Because you know what you're doing. You know better and a whole lot better what you're doing than I know. Because I don't. 
but I'm thankful for for the will of God being done. Whoa. That's the most important thing, Sister Ashley, isn't it? For the will of God being done in your life. If you can hang in there and just work with God and show Him you appreciate everything He showed you to do, you'll be fine. Chapter 9 in Matthew I wanted us to look at. It's, it's a very important... Uh, there's some very important scriptures in here about Jesus and what He said. And he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. Chapter 9, verse 1. You don't have to stand up because I'm going to read the whole thing. Just about. Y'all don't want to stand up that long, do you, Bill? I don't think so. And he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their face, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. There it is. They didn't expect Him to say that, did they? They were expecting Him to heal him. And He said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, this problem, why did they say this man blasphemed? Because they didn't think that he could forgive sins. Right. Who was he to forgive people's sins? Right. Right. They didn't believe him. They didn't believe that he was the Son of God. But Jesus knew that he was going to die for that man's sins. And he was the one that could say it. He knew he could say it. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it's easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thy, unto thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. He, Jesus, wanted them to know. They already knew he could heal, didn't they? They already knew he could heal. They'd seen him heal. But he wanted them to know that he could forgive sins. Because you can't get them forgiven anywhere else. He's the only source. And some people don't think there's any source. They think they just got to live with them, die with them. That's it. But let me tell you something. Jesus wanted us to know that He has power on earth to forgive sins. And all of us that testified about being born again, we know it's true, don't we? Yes. Woo! We know it's true. We don't just guess it's true. We know it's true because we started all over. Not sinning, you know, not started over sinning. We started, no, we started over as a newborn baby. We were born again. And Jesus had the power. He has the power. He had it the day that I got saved. He had the power to forgive my sins and He did it. Whoa, every one of them, they lifted off of me like a big old load. They were a big old load. I had done a lot of things wrong. And it was a big load that just came off of my shoulders. I felt him leave. Amen. Jesus had the power to forgive sins on earth. And listen, if you're carrying a big load of sins right now, whoever you are, and you're carrying a big load of sins, just listen to me. That load lifted off of my shoulders, off of my life. I felt it leave. When Jesus took it off of me. And I knew that I was born again. So, if you need that, it's yours if you want it. Jesus can do that for you. He has, that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. You may be there listening or watching this with somebody that's saved and you're not. Get them to lay their hands on you and pray and ask God to 
uh, cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Get them to pray for you. Let them lay their hands on you and ask Jesus to forgive all your sins and let them come off of you and let you be born again. He'll do it. Hallelujah. Because He said, that, that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He said, Then said He to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thine house. The man went healed and forgiven. Healed and forgiven, Bill. Jesus means business, doesn't He? When you get down to business with Him, you find out He means business too. Hallelujah. He knows how to mean business. He knows how to take sins off of you and He knows how to give you a new life. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God which had given such power unto men. And as Jesus passed forth from thence, He saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom. And He saith unto him, Follow Me. And he arose and followed him. Brother Don, what do you know about what Matthew did that day? What did he do? He rose and followed him. What, did, what else was there a detail about it? He gave up all his living. That's, he was a wealthy man. Didn't he leave all the money, all the receipts, all everything? Just, with him. just got up and left. Got up and left it. What did he see in Jesus? Yes. He followed him the rest of his life and gave his life a martyr. All the disciples were martyred except John and they tried to and couldn't. He gave his life. He got up from that table. He left those taxes. He left the, the, the bills and the receipts and everything. Just got up from it and Follow Jesus. Hallelujah. Right, Bill? That's what you do. You he follow. Wasn't a maker, man. He wasn't a uh, oh, no. fisherman or a common mm -mm. laborer or any of such. Well, who wrote Matthew? Well, well yeah. They have, <laughs> they have the wrote, but, you know. Yeah, but he wrote this book we're reading. Well, understood. He wrote Matthew. But I'm just saying that he, he understood things. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he was learning. Yes, he was. He was, was. He was an educated Jew. <laughs> and he, he discerned that Jesus was who, who the prophet said he was. Yes. And he followed, he followed him. And it came to pass, and as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. He didn't want... Well, he did want the Pharisees because they were sinners still. He wanted them all. He wanted the scribes. He wanted the Pharisees. He wanted the religious people. The, the, all of them. He wanted all of them. But the only ones that wanted him were the publicans and the sinners. That were known publicans, known sinners. Publicans were like Matthew. He was working for the Romans. Getting taxes of the people. And they wanted to know, the Pharisees wanted to know, why are your, is your master eating with publicans and sinners? And Jesus said, they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. So what did that tell you about Jesus, Sister Barbara? And he knew what to do, didn't he? You know, if you go to a doctor, a physician, you got something wrong with you, you expect them to know what to do about it, don't you? You don't expect them to say, I'm not sure what it is, see you later. You don't expect them to. You, you expect them to know what they're doing. And that's what Jesus was saying. These people are sick. And they need a physician. They need somebody that knows what to do about it. 
Did he know what to do about it with you, sister? Yes, he did. He knew. He knew what you needed, Brother David. Sister Yvonne, he knew what you needed. He knew what every one of us needed. And I tell you what I needed, I needed him. I still need him. I need him more today than I've ever needed him. When we got here, Lori got all those songs and we started singing, I'm telling you, I begin to feel the Lord. And I, it made me feel so much better. I worked hard today and done whatever I could, but I was really not satisfied. I was more hungry for the Lord than just to pray. Sometimes you pray, you know, but you're waiting on Him answering, Him, Him being there with you. You know, you're sick. You need a physician. You need somebody that knows what they're doing. I don't know what I'm doing, Lord. Here I am. I'm praying to you. I'm asking you to help me. I'm not sure what you want to do. You know, you have the Holy Ghost. That doesn't mean you know everything. You don't. Sometimes you got to press through and seek God and ask Him to help you. And ask Him to speak to you. You know, and when He comes around, then you go, ah. Oh. That's what people do when they go to the doctor. They go into that examination room. They sit down. They go, now nah, I'm not worried about it anymore. He'll tell me what to do. That's what it is with Jesus. He'll tell you what to do. He'll help you. Because that's what he, what he meant. He meant, I, I'm, I'm glad they're here. They're sick. They need a physician. I'm it. That's one good thing about Jesus. Is he wasn't... Uh, falsely modest or anything like that. I mean, he would just say straight out, I'm what you need. <laughs> and I know he is. Yes. Woo, he is. Glory to God, I'm what you need. You're, you're sick, you need me. That's why I'm eating with you. Because you need me. But go ye and learn what that means. We learn what that means, don't we? Sister Barbara, if you get where you need him real bad, won't he be there? Yes. Yes. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Hallelujah. Repentance. Sister Annie, what is repentance? Not just saying you're sorry for what you've done, but actually deep down in your heart you want to change. Yes. You yes. don't want to be that way any longer. Right. It's, it's action. Yes. It's a real change of life, isn't it? Yes. Repentance is. Where you are not any longer what you are sat you're not any longer satisfied with what you once were satisfied with. Can't live like that. And once you find you know, even after you live for the Lord a long time, He can show you something in your life that you go, oh, I don't want to do that in, that way anymore. I don't want to do that. So you you can repent even after you're saved. Why? Because sometimes you just don't get it for a long time. You know? You don't get, like he said, but go ye and learn what that meaneth. There's times when you've got to go and learn what something means. Once you learn it, you go, oh, 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 oh. <clears throat> Repent. And then you, you know, he cleanses you from that. And you're, in that area, you're new. You're new. Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast off, but thy disciples fast not? And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bridegroom chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. What do you think about that, Brother John? <coughs> Right. The bridegroom hasn't really been taken from us, meaning he's living in our hearts, but he is not in our uh, physical presence. 
So in that respect, he is taken from us. And he didn't want his, his disciples to fast while he was with them because there wasn't a reason. When he's taken away, the reason is that you're trying to find a closer place where he's more real to you, where you can hear from him better. And when you fast, you know, you're not eating, you're not distracted by all of that, and you're just pressing in, seeking his face. When you're fasting, then he has the opportunity to get uh, around all of those distractions that usually you're underneath. And you can come face to face with him. Many people have in fasting. And you hear from him easier. So that's what he meant. He meant you're the bridegroom, the, the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them and then shall they fast. That means when you we don't have him in our physical presence. So realize if the Lord if it seems like he's a far off far away, then you might just say, Well, I think I'll skip a meal and and uh, pray during that time. I'll seek the Lord. I'll try, uh, or even a day, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, let, let all of that go for a day. You know, you'll, just like Bill talking about the distractions of holding his arms off, up and standing with his legs, of course the body, the body's going to fight you when you fast. It does. But even if you get loose for one minute and get a glimpse of the Lord that you haven't had, wouldn't it be worth it? I mean, you know, those disciples, they were standing right there with him face to face all the time. And he didn't want them to fast because they had him. But we don't have him. And so he said, then shall they fast in those days. No, uh, verse 16 says, No man putteth a piece of new cloth unto an old garment. For that which is put in to fill it up, take it from the garment, and the rent is made worse. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break and the wine runneth out. And the bottles perish, but they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. Okay, this is as far as I'm going to go tonight, but I want us to talk about this in this chapter. I want us to talk about no man putteth a piece of new cloth unto an old garment. For that which is put in to fill it up taketh from the garment, and the rent is made worse. When we talk about being born again, we're really talking about being completely new. We're not trying to add this, this word, to something old. You know, our old man. Our old man won't appreciate it. Our old man won't love it. Our old man won't care about it at all. But the new man is starving for it. He's hungry be fed and this is what Jesus was trying to say he's saying you're not you don't want to uh, try to add me to your your life just add me to your life don't do it let yourself be new let yourself be born again you know, it seems like we've talked this over and over and over from the time of the baptism to now. It's, and it's the same thing. You're a new creature. You are not what you, what you once were. The enemy will come and try to make you feel like you have to be like what you've always been. He's a liar. You don't. Not one of us have to be. We are new creatures. And the Word of God is not supposed to be like new cloth to an old garment. You know, if I um, have an old dress over there and I like that dress and I say, well, it's got this tear right here, I'll put a new piece of cloth in there. And it's, if it's old enough, when I put that new piece of cloth in there, it's just going to make it look worse, isn't it? It'll look a lot worse. Might as well not even try that. And that's what Jesus was saying. This that I'm doing in you, it's not 
something that you just add on to your life. This, what I'm doing in you, is making you new. Just let me. Just say, Lord, have your way. Make me new. You know, that's why you get up and pray. That's why you get the Bible and read it. Because you don't know what to do about being new, do you? When I got saved, a long time ago, when I got saved, I thought, oh, now what do I do? My sins are all gone. How do I live? I know it's going to be different, but I wasn't sure what to do. You know, what do I do now? <laughs> That's the truth. I didn't know what to do. I wanted to stay clean. I, I, I tried not to do anything that, you know, I've been raised in the church. I knew what it was to live for God. So I tried my best to, to do just like the other old, older ladies in the church were doing. I just took a clue from them. They were, if they were doing that, I'll do that. Because that must be what the Lord wants. Sure enough, they were good teachers. Real good teachers. By their example. So I was brand new. And it was wonderful. Because I, my husband, oh my, he knew something happened to me. Because <laughs> he wasn't saved then. And he looked at me. He thought, you know, I flipped out because, you know, I always wore tight jeans and I always wore, uh, you know, jewelry and got my hair and all the stuff that I used to do. And all of a sudden I didn't do any of it because I wanted to stay clean. I felt like he was showing me how to be clean. So I, I tried it. I tried to be new. Try not put new cloth into an old one. So it worked. Here I am. <laughs> it worked. You know, you can take the example of others. God gives us those examples to help us. And he said, Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break. And this is more right here about the new wine. It's talking about the Holy Ghost. It's not just the, the life. It's talking about that God wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And the reason he's talking about like that because he wants to uh, put it, that new wine in something that can hold it. You put the new wine into old bottles, it ain't going to work. Actually, they're really not talking about uh, glass bottles. They're talking about skin bottles, because that's the kind they had. It was the skins of animals. And if they were old, old, brittle, you put that new wine in there and it started working and started stretching out that skin, it won't stretch. Bust. Wine's lost. Bottle's lost. Ain't going to work. So he said you got to put new wine into new bottles. And if, it's, if there's, the skin is flexible and... You know, new, it'll just, <coughs> as it works, it'll be, it'll just stretch out, accommodate it. That new, new model. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost in that new bottle. Oh, oh, don't you want that? That's the best. It's the best. New wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. You know, Jesus t told it like it was. He didn't t tell it like you might like it. But he told it like it was, because what's the use of telling you something and then you're going to be that bottle that's burst and the wine's lost? What's the use of that? So I'm going to tell, tell everybody, be new, be made new. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to sing it again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Help me, Brother Don. I don't know if you play the same way every time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a new song. I, uh, I've lost my 
just when, when I, I had it, you switched all right, it up. Let me ask you this, Brother Don. Have you ever sang a new song, played it at the same time, and worshipped all you could? No, man. Okay. Exactly. Some people can do it, but I get lost sometimes. Uh oh, one of them. You know where I'm when it flips the pedal? Oh, the polarity? I'll try to turn it on. Okay. Now, try it. Oh, play it for me, Brother Don. I don't have to worry about getting wrong. You may think it foolish what I'm gonna say. I'm not ashamed. No, I'm not ashamed. One day I pray Jesus take my seat. Jesus. Love each other. <laughs> Love each other. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. See you Sunday. God bless you.